Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar of European GPSL today. My name is Victoria. I'm a client relationship manager at TEA, and I'm here in the webinar with my colleague, Onu. What's your thing? Hello, everyone. I'm Ola. I've been working at TEA Global, so I've been account manager for three years now. Today, we'll be talking about the key changes uh, introduced by the GPSR and how businesses can ensure compliance with the responsible person obligations. We'll also go through some of the most common product certifications, such as the skin work and how to ensure product compliance in the EU within the process. So make sure you're staying on the right side of the loop. So of course, not to mention, stay tuned for some exclusive offers and some discounts for our audience at the end of the webinar. So let's get started. So, uh, Ulu, as you yes. know, uh, the main reason why we're having this session today is that like many of our clients have received this uh, notification from uh, Amazon on GPSR. Yes, what is that? Exactly. So, uh, GPSR stands for General Product Safety Regulation, and it will eventually replace the old regulations of the original GPSD, which mm -hmm. is General Product Safety Directive. Okay. So, Ulu, do you know the major difference between the old regulation GPSD and the new GPSR? Yes, let's get on to, uh, to the next slide. So, I mean, the key change is that from the 30th of December 2024, sellers were actually required to appoint an EU responsible person for a vast range of products, most non food product products, in fact. Yes, indeed. And on top of that, there are some new requirements coming along the way. For example, on the GPSR, the level of manufacturer information required on product packaging can be higher. Let's have a look at this table comparison. As what well, we can see here uh, on the table, the red parts on this table are the new requirements on the GPSR, which mandates more detailed information from producers on their products. For instance, in the past, under the original GPSD, it was not compulsory to label manufacturers' postal and email addresses. However, under the new GPSR, it is now legally required. Plus, uh, GPSR regulates not only for product per se, but also product listings. So it's no longer just about your products, but also how information of the products are displayed on the website. Yes, that's correct. And this is particularly important for online sellers in the sense that online marketplaces will be obligated to strictly enforce these new rules. Uh, marketplaces, they will be checking all eligible product listings to remain compliant. Okay, I think, um, I mean, with that slide as well, uh, the, the most important part was the key changes. So yeah. that is quite important. Okay, so what are the essentials for businesses to stay compliant with GPSR? Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, depending on what kind of products you're selling, you may need to appoint an EU responsible person for your goods in EU. Uh, your EU responsible person will be able to help you comply with many of the GPSR requirements on your behalf. However, don't forget, you still need to make sure your product listings are, as well as the products themselves, are compliant. So we've talked a little about the product listings, but we also need to mention that certain products can only be sold once they've undergone an EU mandated product testing. So before we actually move on, uh, it's important to remember if your products already required safety certifications to be sold in the EU, the GPSR doesn't change this. You still need to get them tested and certified. Yes. Uh... Safety certification is certainly important. And before I arrive there, uh, let's first have a look at uh, how to ensure the compliance on the GPSR. Yes, key requirements. So um, as I believe, uh, many in our audience may have this question for now. Uh, yes. Could you explain to us uh, what exactly is a EUR? Of course, many, many of the clients ask this question. So it's actually basically a, co a point of contact for your EU customers in case they need to get in touch with someone or any product safety concerns. So um, businesses who are based outside the EU may need to appoint them. Mm -hmm. And so this EUR should be somebody that is based in EU, but by responsible person, what does it entail? Uh, what kind of responsibilities is there? An EU responsible person is actually responsible for collecting records and ensuring that your products are compliant with whatever regulations there are, mm -hmm. such as the EUC certification scheme. Also, um, if any European regulator has any issue with your products or your customers raise any concerns, 
uh, the responsible bus will actually be responsible for the communications. Ah, so uh, a responsible person is held accountable for seller's product compliance and can serve as an in reason for yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, well, oh no, as I remember, uh, previously Amazon was providing this service to all this something. Yes, good, good information actually to remember. Um, Amazon did previously offer something called the Amazon Responsible Person, classified as ARP mm -hmm. service, uh -huh. um, if you were selling on the platform itself. But the service actually goes at the end of March 2024. So, uh, what happened to uh, sellers who were using this service? Well, obviously, they will have to, uh, I mean, appoint a new responsible person. So, it is quite important for sellers to uh, basically, uh, who are selling CE markets, to appoint a responsible person. How so? I mean, uh, the existing GPSD already requires CE mark products to have a responsible person. Uh, so, the enforcement date uh, of GPSR does not actually affect this. Mm -hmm. So to actually summarize, I mean, with this slide as well, under the GPSR, most non-EU businesses selling goods to EU customers will actually mm -hmm. need to appoint one. But how do sellers outside EU understand what kind of uh, what kind of products they are regulated under GPSR? We've actually listed some exceptions here. Uh, if your item is not on the list, it's likely covered by GPSR, uh, GPSR anyways, and you will therefore need to appoint uh, a responsible person. Uh -huh. So unless I'm selling something like medicine, uh, foods, animal products, basically, yes. I, I have to comply, right? Yeah. Well, uh, I have another question. Okay. <laughs> As you mentioned, you know, uh, a responsible person fulfills a lot of uh, obligations for sellers. But what if I'm a seller based on you and I don't want to fulfill these uh, responsibilities myself? Can I possibly appoint somebody else to do it? Yeah, you're, you're coming up with a very, very good question. You can actually, yes, you can certainly do so. I mean, uh, appointing an EU RP is mandatory for non-EU businesses. But if you are in the EU, you can still appoint one. So the main difference is that you no longer need to act as the contact person. Someone else can actually do that for you. Oh, that is actually very nice because uh, a lot of benefits I could think of is uh, if I'm a sole trader in you and I don't want to disclose my personal address or other personal information, uh, I can nominate somebody to ask exactly. as well yeah, so you to do that. That's exactly. really insightful, actually, I know. Can we have a look of some uh, examples, maybe? Yeah, here's a quick example. A lot of toys sold in the EU need to comply with the Toy Safety Directive which also requires toys to be CE certified. So if you're selling toys, you need to get them CE certified and then appoint a responsible person. Mm, I see. But uh, it says also on the slides that they are now CE products. Yes, those still need to be checked for other product safety testing. Um, and then you can appoint a responsible person. Is there any consequence in the seller that's not a point of responsible person? You know, a, a, lot of, a lot of sellers actually ask this question as well. And um, yes, I mean, if, if you don't actually comply, there are quite a lot of potential consequences. So that is a good question. For example, when you try to import inventory into the EU, customers will always check what source of goods you're importing, whether they require product safety certification, and of course, whether you've appointed a responsible person. Oh, really oh, yes, yes. You may even have your shipments sent back to you, or in the worst case scenario, even seize and destroy. Um, I mean, in this case, it's really important to check that you have everything in order before you start actually shipping anything. But I was wondering, like, what would happen to those goods which are already in you before they Well, I mean, the GPSR will require online marketplaces such as Amazon to check your products and product listings. So for the marketplace, they will do the same thing as customers. They'll check what sort of goods you're, you are selling and whether you have the relevant product safety certification and whether you need to appoint uh, a responsible person. And what if a seller fails to comply? Well, uh, the marketplace can actually remove your product listings or even suspend the sales entirely. No, yeah. that's really undesirable. No, what can sellers prepare for new regulations? Of course. <laughs> So, I mean, in this case, you don't actually want to be in that scenario. So it is quite important for businesses to know about this and so that they can avoid all the consequences and the outcomes in the future. All right. Let's say uh, if a seller is new to EU with their products, uh, how can they use their products uh, and they need to appoint a responsible person? 
can they possibly appoint CPA worker to do a job? Yeah, that's that's the next question. So, uh, of course, we we offer our own uh, responsible person services. That's why we're here. So, uh, we're more than happy to, to assist you with that. So, how can a seller get started with the process? Well, usually, uh, we'll ask you to see whether you already have the necessary safety certifications for your products. This usually includes a product testing report that the manufacturer can provide. Ah, so this is linked to the safety certification you mentioned previously. Can we have a look at that? Yes, with the next slide. Right, big question, Olu. So what exactly is product testing? Could you please let us know? Product testing, we call the, the, the whole process. With the process, um, this is quite important. I mean, over here on this slide, as you can see, um, it's, it's quite, uh, you know, with this information, it's quite important for you to take in as well. Um, some sellers, before they appoint a responsible person, they need to be aware that product testing is very important. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the main reason we ask product testing uh, certificates is because the EU only allows products to be sold if they comply with the safety legislation. So product testing is the only way to ensure this. Wow, your slides contain so much important information. Maybe we can stay here for a few seconds for people to take a screenshot. Yes, yes, that's okay. right. It is why I'm thinking, so you know, you need to be aware of this. And Ulu, another yes. question. Why is it so important for our clients to, to get the product testing done? Well, um, the two, uh, well, the, the reason we ask product testing, as mentioned, is that the EU has its own requirements for products to be sold if they comply with their safety legislation. So as mentioned, uh, the product testing is the most important part of this. So that's the only way to, to ensure it. Mm -hmm. And what exactly is the relationship between our product testing and the EU's legislation? Well, to be honest, the, the two are completely linked. Uh, when we are nominated as the responsible person, we're also responsible for checking that the goods we are providing representation are fully compliant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, so as you can see, there are a lot of different types of product certification. I'm sure many of you have heard of this one, C. Yes, I recognize that logo. It's on so many of his products, especially yeah. on electronics, like on his mouse, keyboards, laptops, everything. Exactly. I mean, C certification, uh, the European Confirmity, many type of products are covered by CV regulations. But Victoria, CV mm -hmm. marketing is not the only type of product certification. Yes, that is true. As we can see very often, for, as we have seen very often for our clients, uh, many products may not need CE, but other types of safety testing, as we can see listed on the bottom right of this slide. Uh, for instance, uh, products that contain products that contain chemicals will undergo reach, reach by ESC hash testing, and they uh, they are also all sort of different tests for our products. They are designed to be worn or come into frequent contact with skin. Say, for instance, uh, one of my clients, I sell accessories, and actually, like, what they do was uh, reach inside the skin. Exactly. So the testings are very comprehensive. So. Yes. I mean, here's an example uh, of the product. This, this is quite important as well, to be honest. Products will be issued with a report to indicate whether they are compliant, and if not, why they aren't. Well, um, by any chance, if the testing result is unsuccessful, what does this mean? I mean, a good question. In many cases, this can still be fixed. We'll usually be able to provide feedback on why the products failed. Um, in some cases, you might not even need to change the product itself. Sometimes it's just the packaging that needs to be picked out. Uh -huh. So what does a seller need to do to show TV what kind of products he or she is selling? Yes, well, um, you can actually send the link of your products to us and tell us some key details, such, such as the materials, colors, and whether you already obtained seed specification. Oh, there's a lot of details to you by each product. Yes, yes, uh, I know it's, it's quite hard for, for sellers to provide, maybe they sell a lot of items, but remember that we need to assess each individual product. The link cannot just be a general story. The product testing is done on per product basis, so it's quite important to, to remember. It's a really precise process, isn't it? Yes, yes, all right, all right, that sounds good. Well, uh, 
I cannot believe that we have covered so much on GPSR today, although hopefully it can be helpful to all of our audience. And as I guess for many, uh, from GPSR to EUOP to product testing, it may still sound a little bit complicated. So we really have a small uh, recap on what we have spoken about today. Yes, uh, the recap is always important. <laughs> it's easy to forget, especially with some generation. Yes. So, um, if I have understood everything correctly, the new GPS operations will be enforced later in December this year. Yes, that's correct. And sellers need to check which uh, safety regulation applied to their products, get them tested if needed, and then appoint a responsible person if outside. Exactly. But also, uh, don't forget, you can still appoint a responsible person even if you're already in the yeah. So, we can basically help streamline your operations further as you don't need to get involved as much. Uh, is there anything else we should pay attention to maybe? Yes, yes, there is. Uh, there is one thing that can be easily missed by everyone, actually. So the UK is no longer part of the EU, but Northern Ireland is, and that's a special case. So the GPSR still applies in Northern Ireland. So sellers who are looking to only sell in the UK still need to be aware of this. Yeah, it is always tricky in the area, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I understand why people get confused, so it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And if a seller wants to appoint TBA as his or her responsible person, how does it work? Well, it's, to be honest, it's not a very difficult process. Yeah. We'll basically go through your documents and make sure you have all the necessary certificates first. As I mentioned before, if you don't have the correct certifications, we'll see what sort of testing products you need. So that is when you send the product link. Mm -hmm. um, at the end, once everything is completed, we'll be able to act as a responsible person then. And is it a one of procedure? Again, uh, you're coming up with <laughs> amazing questions. <laughs> we, we offer responsible person services on a on a yearly basis. So you'd have to remove with us each year. Yes, right. Yes. All right. Uh, pretty much that's it for today, or no? We have one uh, last question that we need to address in the webinar today. Why should a seller choose to work with TBA on their new responsible person and other compliance work? Uh, what, what is the benefit? Of course, uh, a lot of sellers ask this question. Um, I mean, with TBA, we have 15 years of experience. We, at the moment, have over 60,000 clients, which is a, a major a marketplace, with 200 plus partnerships at the moment with, with our, our marketplaces. And customized solutions. And also, don't forget with multi language support, it can be English, Turkish, Spanish, Italian, French. So, uh, we, we have that advantage as well. Um, and because we, we technically we work with big marketplaces such as Amazon as well. So, that's quite useful. Um, but yeah, in this case, um, you know, uh, it's, it's quite important to, to choose the, the right provider to, to provide the URC. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you all for the introduction. And yeah, I uh, would like to thank you guys. Thank you all for um, staying with us till the end of this webinar. We understand that this change in GPSC, from GPSC to GPSR is not so easy to cope with for many sellers. And uh, as a company, we'd like to support you for another mile. So uh, for all the audience today in the webinar, we have prepared this gift for you, which is a voucher for 20% off on EU office services. It's 20% off on EU office services. So the promotion code is EURP2024 TBA. So to redeem it, you can either uh, take a screenshot of this slide or you can key in EURP 2024 TBA when you are in top results. So by any chance, if you have any further inquiries on GPSR or you're not sure if you should go for product testing for your products, uh, you can either be in touch with your uh, account managers or client relationship managers directly, or you can use our uh, public inquiry channels uh, like the WhatsApp and the email address you can see on the slide. So our inquiry WhatsApp is uh, plus double four, triple seven, six, nine, oh, eight, double, one, four. And our email address for inquiries is info at cbaglobal.com. So uh, we will stay here for a few more seconds for people to take a screenshot of this voucher. And at the same time, as we are entering to your session, uh, if you have any questions on the topic today, please feel free to uh, continue to key in the box. 
we will try our best to uh, go through all of them. And if we don't have enough time for that, uh, we will definitely reply to you after the webinar. Yes, and guys, don't forget, it is valid until the 24th of August. Yes. So not much left, exactly a month away. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would say take advantage of it because the requirements are coming up, they're piling up. So by the end of December, we do need to be compliant. And yeah, I mean, with this discount code, it's going to be very interesting. Yes, as I believe this is the first time we'll have a discount this large at yeah, 20%. So to be honest, yes, we, especially for EURP, uh, we do provide a service for many years. Um, but with promotions and discounts, we, I mean, this is the first time we've come up with it. Never so this one. Yes, exactly. It is an important uh, service and most sellers will need it. So I think from our side, it is quite important to give them a discount because yeah. it is a requirement that they all need to, to sign mm -hmm. up to. And it's only exclusive for a uh, webinar today. <laughs> oh, only exclusive for the webinar, yeah. <laughs> so you need to come with the codes, take a screenshot, um, send it over to us through email, through WhatsApp. Uh, but yeah, it's only exclusive to the audience in the webinar. Got our first question from Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. Uh, the question is, uh, is there a fee to review our products for compliance? Is there a fee to review our products for compliance? So if you're talking about the product testing, um, how it works is um, in the beginning, we'll ask for the product link. Once we receive the product link, we won't obviously, uh, it won't cost anything. We'll have to check that for you. If there is any testing involved, then of course we will mention to you what testing is involved and how much it costs. Uh, but it's free of charge for us to check if you do need any testing certificates. Okay. Thank you, Kimberly, for the question. And we will see another one from Molly asking uh, if uh, it's necessary to appoint an EU or B in each EU member state, or is one enough? Uh, Molly, so the answer is uh, it's, it's quite enough because uh, EU or B is a regulation on EU level instead of member state level. So uh, it's pretty much applicable if you have one EU or B then you do not have to worry about any of yourself in uh, you. That's, uh, yeah. that's, a, that's a good question. I think that a lot of sellers, they sort of get confused. If they think, you, yeah, right? so for example, one of my sellers, they may have in, in Germany, for example, they only sell in Germany, but then they think the EURP only applies in Germany. Now, once you receive the EURP certificate, it applies to all countries. In the EU. But like, that's quite important. That's a good question to be honest. Let's see if we have any more questions at the moment. So, so oh, yeah, another one from Tyler. Yes. Uh, so, Tyler's question is on US or Canada testing recommends. Um, oh, well, I think it depends, right? It depends on what kinds of products uh, Tyler is mentioning. Because uh, depending on categories, you know, of course, you know, plus the different policies. Exactly, so, the testing certificate is quite important as well. Yes, so, say for instance, CE, I don't think it's, it's uh, mandatory in years. Like yeah, no, I think I think the in this case, how it will work is if you do have the testing anyways, uh -huh. um, I mean, you would have to check the certificates first. And then, of course, if it does comply with the regulations, that's usually fine, we can proceed. Mm -hmm. uh, but if not, of course, we would have to make new testing basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, we've got another question here. Amazon UK is not based in Northern Ireland. Why would GPSR apply? Oh, no, no, that's actually a really good question. And this is a question we've been explaining to a lot of times, a lot of times already. <laughs> right, so um, Northern Ireland is tricky in a way that is a part of the United Kingdom. But at the same time, after the UK leave, um, New EU is still a part of the uh, European Union. So it has like a really special identity, I would say. It's EU and UK at the same time. So uh, in this regard, uh, this is the reason why uh, Northern Ireland, in Northern Ireland, still need to comply to uh, EU RP regulations. Uh, we have another one from David Boyd uh, asking. Uh, David says, uh, I purchased from a manufacturer who sends the information of confirmation for each product. Does it mean to supply me with a single new crypto documentation or in cross section on Amazon? Mm -hmm. And then this is a good question as well, to be honest, uh, from David. Uh, 
Ideally, it like can provide a really good. So like you have course. to do the testing yourself. Exactly. You can just use the use their testing resource uh, as part of your EVRP. Of course. So you don't have to. It's less costly for you. Exactly. Yeah. I think so. I think it saves you a lot more time as well. I mean, even if they don't have a course, we do the product testing, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, of course a quick process as well. But from your side, if you do already have these certificates from the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we can straight away apply for the EU response to your person. Yes. So, yeah, but always, always double check with your manufacturer if they do have testing certificates, um, all sorts, you know, if, if they have anything they can send to us, we can always get it checked anyway for them. Yes, and if it does comply with the EURP registration, we'll let you know, actually, you don't need any product testing, mm -hmm. we can put them straight away. So, yeah, it's quite important for you to, to double check with the, with the manufacturer. The more information you can get from the manufacturers, but yes. it's not just for EU or but for uh, EPR as well, the environmental regulations. So the more information you have, uh, the less thing, the less efforts you have to put in, basically, for compliance. Yes. Well, we have another question from Tyler. Yes. Uh, does your fee increase all communication with authorities, or do you have hidden costs? Mm -hmm. That is a that's a good question, to be honest. Um, well. I mean, when the process starts, for example, let's say you don't actually have a uh, testing certificate from the manufacturer, mm -hmm. um, we will, of course, send the product links to us. We'll get that checked for you. And if there's any testing required, we give you a quote. That depends on the products and the categories you sell. So once we receive that quote, we send that over to you. Uh, and of course, if you wish to proceed, uh, we proceed with the testing. Now, once the, the testing certificates are received, we can then apply for the EURP. Uh, the EURP has got a fee itself anyways, uh, which is £900. Um, and of course, once you are registered, which covers up to 40 items, um, you are compliant, basically. Mm -hmm. However, in the future, for example, if you do decide to um, maybe add more items, more than 40 items, uh, then of course, the fees change accordingly. Uh, but yeah, usually uh, we, we give you the information with the quote and the fees from the beginning mm -hmm. and let you know how the process works so you understand. Uh, but you won't be surprised or, you know, uh, popped off with any, uh, you know, uh, quotes from, from the authorities. No, so. I guess you know. Right. Yes, no, right. it, won't be, <laughs> it won't be a main issue, I believe. Yes. Right. Um, okay, I've got so many questions today. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's quite good, I mean, for really fellas to score. Right? Yeah, it, it, but yeah, I mean, even, um, even if we couldn't read out your questions or you have any questions you'll mention later on, um, please get in contact with us. That can be through uh, email, through WhatsApp, whichever one is easier for you. Uh, and as mentioned, I think it is very important to, to have this information um, as the requirements are becoming harder, more regulations. Uh, so you need to be up to date. And of course, you can reach out to us um, at any point. Well, yes. And again, I would like to thank you all for giving your time today. And don't forget to reach out to redeem the promotion right. and learn more details about our of these services. So again, uh, you can contact us either directly with your account managers or client relationship managers or with our uh, public WhatsApp and uh, email address. Our WhatsApp number is uh, double four. 347-690-8114 and uh, our email address is info at tpaglobal.com. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you for joining and we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Take care. Uh, to enhance your brand's credibility and also...